Hello traders. Okay, I am live. I'm officially live. It says YouTube. So hello traders. Uh, anyone here? Let me pop out the the chat. So how to do it? Okay, like this. I'm a bit rusty. It's been a long time. Uh, since my last uh, live streaming session, I hope we will have uh, some very good trades today. Uh, let me do like this if the chat. I hope it is not too noisy uh, because uh, they just started to do some gardening outside, but I hope it is okay. Mm, okay, I switch directly to my trading view, but as usual, I wait for someone to uh, to write something in the chart to confirm that everything is okay. You know that I'm always very, very worried about uh, uh, the quality of the streaming. Uh, so if uh, uh, microphone is okay, if camera is okay, please let me know. And uh, okay, I see. Oh, Saurom is here from uh, the Facebook group. Uh, hi to you. How are you? How is it going with uh, Bitcoin? I know you are a trader on cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin. So maybe later we can also have a look at it. And uh, today I want to analyze some uh, uh, some currency pairs with you. Uh, so forex trading mainly with the swing trading, but also with the Ichimoku. If there is anyone interested in it, and uh, want to show you also how it is going so far with uh, uh, my account. Uh, let me see in here. How's okay here? Uh, my account on on the MetaTrader, the swing trading account. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, it is recovering at the moment but we went through a strong period of drawdown a very very aggressive risk I'm gonna talk about it during the streaming and uh, then we can uh, we can also talk about uh, Darwin X for a few minutes because there are upcoming changes but I'm going to talk in detail tomorrow in another video and then of course any kind of question any kind of market analysis request uh, just feel free free to type in the in the chat because I'm here because we analyze all together so if you have any kind of request I'm more than happy to to help you and to analyze together with you okay uh, Lindsay is here hello to you Stefano is also here hello to you Stefano and Simon all okay Andras says all okay hi to all of you I see already many people Mohammed is also here and says everything is okay so great also Sao says uh, he's waiting for my analysis on Bitcoin so uh, obviously, I want to analyze it uh, and uh, it is in my agenda also for today because I have a kind of investment in it, a small one to be honest. So I also wanted to talk about it. But if I forget, because I always try to focus more on Forex trading, if I forget, please just let me uh, know and uh, remind it to me. So I want to start with Forex trading, as I was saying. and. Uh, uh, I want to analyze first what I have already on the market, then what I am monitoring for today, and then uh, some other interesting currency pairs that may turn out as good ones for today, and uh, also an overview of the market in general. Then, as, um, as I said before, if you have any requests, just feel free to ask in the chat. So, uh, as you can see from my MetaTrader in here, let me pop that out, okay. As you can see from the meta trader i already have uh, a couple of trades uh, uh, one is on the us dollar canadian dollar a short position actually you can see i split this in two and uh, then i have a long position on australian dollar against uh, uh, against us dollar so i'm already quite active today on the market uh, we had monday that was not a very good day to trade i only had one trade and was not very good then yesterday it seemed that the market started the two trend again and so I had a very good day I think I closed with almost plus three percent on the account and today is also uh, it also seems to be a trending day and uh, and so good for the swing trading strategy and uh, it also seems to be a good uh, trading day for me I'm up already by almost two percent for today 
so recovering very fast and uh, especially because we are having uh, uh, a couple of uh, good tra- trending days so that uh, is uh, is very very beneficial for swing trading and uh, i wanted to talk first about the general condition of the market uh, so w- how uh, the market is be- behaving overall so you can see we passed uh, a period if i check some random currency pairs i was talking about australian dollar us dollar so i keep talking about it you can see we passed uh, a a period uh, in which we were having a kind of a not super strong movement uh, and then uh, um, it was also more complicated after this period in which we didn't have strong movements because you can see that in this period okay we were not having strong movements in here but uh, overall you can see that the market uh, uh, in this range here is trending higher going uh, uh, forming higher lows and higher highs but then we had a very very complicated period to trade you can see here super deep movement going down you can see some of these candles having very very strong shadows recovering during the same session during the same four hours in here and so very complicated to trade something like this also it's not easy when you have something like this it's not easy to try to understand what kind of trend you have because you just had super strong down movement so you may wonder is this a new uptrend or is this just a retracement of the market it seems that recently uh, the situation is improving so we are kind of having new trends on the market we had a situation for like uh, uh, three or four weeks you could have seen that every single week with my swing trading account i was losing money every single week i could not figure out what kind of trend we had on the market sometimes it seemed that we had a good trending situation like for example in this period we were uh, going with the price above last high of the market i opened my position uh, a long position on the breakout and then it is going quite well and then strong uh, retracement on the market uh, hitting my stop loss and then trending again going higher so very complicated phase of the market i would say in the last uh, 30 days 45 days more or less but uh, uh, in the past two days as i said it seems that it's going slightly better yesterday we had uh, a a very very neat and very 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 clean breakout on uh, some currency pairs Australian dollar against the US dollar was one of this you can see we had the last important swing high in here and uh, you can also see that the setup of the moving averages is clearly uh, trending higher showing an uptrend so it was just a matter of waiting for a good opportunity to open a long position and yesterday we had not only this big up movement but also the candle that breaks through the level was a very clear one a very strong candle so yesterday we could finally have some uh, good profits on the market today i think that this is another opportunity to trade uh, we have this level here so i placed my stop loss just slightly below this level that we have here and i was waiting just for a slight retracement on the market to, to open again my long position and uh, i opened my long position uh, not having a super clear pattern a super clear confirmation on the market i just uh, uh, relied on this uh, hammer that we have here that is not even uh, on the level here it's quite close but not exactly on that level but for me it was enough because i don't really need to have a super strong confirmation when the price is not only coming from a super strong up movement like this but also coming from a sustained uptrend that is showed also by the setup of the moving averages so this was my trading idea for uh, this morning so far it is going slightly well but i wouldn't really celebrate because it's still a long way so we will see later on how it goes and uh, before uh, switching to another currency pair uh, let me let me see the 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 chart in here and um, so uh, Vincenzo also joined Uh, hi Vincenzo Alex uh, also joined Uh, hello to you Federico will you talk a little bit about the next updates Uh, yes I will also talk a bit about that I was almost forgetting so many many things Uh, and uh, really thank you for reminding all of this it is a period in which I uh, tend to forget uh, a few things Uh, it's just I have taken up too many projects in this period 
and uh, sometimes it's just a bit overwhelming for me so thank you for reminding it to me of course I want to talk about the updates it's one of the most exciting things I'm working on in this period so I'm glad to talk about it and Johnny also joined the hello to you Johnny I hope you're okay and uh, so this was my first trade for today and uh, then I have another one on US dollar Canadian dollar I think that here the logic is pretty much the same just like the one that I just explained on Australian dollar against the US dollar it is a very a clear trending market and uh, you can see setup of the moving averages right now is clearly bearish so of course I'm looking for short positions yesterday we already had a clear opportunity to make some money on this currency pair because we had a breakout of this double uh, low so let me uh, highlight it so clear breakout once again not only super strong down movements but also a clear breakout with a clear strong candle uh, breaking through this level so yesterday was another opportunity to make some money on a short position on a US dollar Canadian dollar and uh, today I, I still want to have a short position on US dollar Canadian dollar of course I want to join the strong down movement and I also want to join the long term uh, uh, trend that is down at the moment so I decided to open this uh, short position once again not on a very strong candlestick pattern I had a very very uh, weak shooting star in there and so instead of opening the the order right away I placed a stop entry order on the low that uh, we had on the shooting star here and you can see that the price just immediately went down hitting my stop entry order continuing to go down so the action so far uh, seems to be bearish also for today so I'm in favor of uh, short positions in here but once again it is not really time to celebrate because it is a long way to go and uh, and we will see how the, the market goes. We are uh, in, in the London session, a quite volatile one but then we will also have the New York session so it's still a long way, I, everything can happen uh, but uh, it, it does look good to be honest to join a super strong trend like this you know I'm a trader that is always in favor of the trend and uh, I don't want to sound uh, that I'm just saying uh, like a cliche or something like that but trend is really your friend and so I always try to have my positions in favor of the trend and so these uh, are the two trades the two positions I have at the moment on the market on my swing trading account but uh, there are other currency pairs that I consider very interesting for today and the Canadian dollar has been quite uh, uh, strong uh, not only against the US dollar but uh, I'm monitoring also Canadian dollar against the Swiss franc and Canadian dollar against Japanese yen to be honest uh, uh, I missed this opportunity to trade uh, right here because I was setting up the, <laughs> the live trading session and uh, I think I can just join now it, it still seems to be a very very good opportunity Opportunity. and I want to explain the logic uh, behind this trade that I want to set up here so if you remember I was uh, trading within this range I also published a trade uh, based on this range on trading view and uh, now the price had a retracement here but finally it went all the way up um, and also breaking through this uh, upper part of the range that we were analyzing now I think that uh, you had a reason also to open a long position in here but I didn't want to open it yesterday because uh, I was also waiting for a further confirmation we have only another important level of possible resistance that is uh, uh, this one here with this wing high here but now we have a super strong candle breaking through that level and uh, and so um, uh, this is already a clear opportunity to open a long position in here and, uh, and uh, as I was saying I missed the opportunity because I was setting up the live trading session but probably we can just structure this trade uh, together and so we can have our first trade together uh, in this live streaming and uh, and I can show you how I usually uh, think about uh, opening the trade and also how to place stop loss and take profit so if I want to join now 
uh, I have to say I'm probably just slightly late. Uh, I would uh, try first of all to get a slightly better price. Uh, I'm talking about just a few pips, not much, because it is clear that uh, here the price is continuing to go to go higher, and uh, uh, I am a bit late. <laughs> so if I want to enter right now, I need to accept a worse risk to reward ratio. And uh, at the moment, let's see if I can get uh, anyway a very good risk to reward ratio, even if I enter the market a bit late. And uh, I think that uh, we have several levels of stop loss that uh, make sense in this situation. Let me enlarge a bit the, the chart so we can think better about it. And uh, I will say that the uh, first level of, uh, of stop loss that we can set is just uh, below this uh, important level that we had with a previous swing high that is here. So first stop loss that will make sense is this one here, just slightly below this level. Remember, this is not an exact level. It is an area of prices. So don't set it just like on this level like this, but just a bit below like something like this. So this is a first stop loss that I will think about. The second stop loss I will think about is to place it right below the candle that initiated the, the strong breakout. So a second level of stop loss that will make sense is below this candle here. So this is a second one that I will think in this kind of situation. And a third one, of course, is to place it below this kind of small uh, uh, of short term support. And uh, of course, also below this area that I was on analyzing before. And uh, of course, the more level of, uh, uh, of protection that you have for your stop loss, the better for your trade. But you also need to think about, uh, you also need to think in terms of risk to reward ratio that you can have. And so if you place a stop loss that is very, very far, having three levels of protection here, you might get a risk to reward ratio that is not so appealing. And so you can compromise your trade on the, on the side of the risk to reward ratio that you can get. So at the moment, I will say that the one that makes more sense is just to uh, meet halfway and place it not only below this level of protection, but also below this low formed by the candle that broke uh, through the, the level of uh, resistance that we had here. So this is the first stop loss that I would think for my trade. But then we have to think about a take profit, and this is going to be a tough one. Uh, we can consider two uh, levels, two measured moves in here. We had a first one we can consider that goes from this level to this level. You know that when we trade the ranges and then we have a breakout of the range, we usually expect a further movement that covers the same amount of pip at least the same amount of paper of the previous uh, uh, range. So here we have roughly this range in here that covers 110 pips, probably just a bit more than that. So if we expect a breakout of this range with a further movement of 110 pips, we can reasonably place our take profit around 0.7112, something like that. So 0.71. 12, let's say 10, something like this. And in this case, we would already have a risk to reward ratio that is better than 1 to 2. So this would already be a trade that is acceptable for me, not just in terms of, uh, uh, of stop loss that is quite reasonable and also take profit that is quite reasonable, but also in terms of direction of the market and risk to reward ratio that is better than one to two. But uh, a second possibility that I will consider is to have this level here and this level here and consider the breakout of this level here. So if we check this range in here, we are talking about a bit less than 150 pips and 150 pips from this level of breakout would go much higher than that, uh, around 0.71 70 more or less, even a bit higher than that. Let's say 0.7170, something like this. And in this case, you can see you would have a risk to reward ratio that is even better than one to four, which is amazing. Considering also that we are a bit late on the market. So if you were able to catch a slightly better price, so probably this would have been even one to five, maybe. So this is a, a very interesting trade that you can have today on the market. And I'm going to structure it 
with you right now. I think that's what makes sense in here is not to wait for a slightly better price. I mean, I mean, it can happen, of course, but we already have the price that is quite strong at the moment. I don't really want to miss the opportunity just because I'm waiting for a slight retracement because it might also go all the way up and never hit my buy limit order in here. So I accept to be late a bit on the market and have a slightly worse price, but uh, I, I want to try to join as soon as possible because the trend looks strong in here. And I accept this level of, uh, of stop loss and probably I will just go for a risk to reward ratio that uh, is uh, uh, a bit better than 1 to 2 as we have started with the breakout of this range in here. And uh, if I see that the price is strong and it's going very very fast uh, higher maybe I can just move this take profit a bit higher and uh, uh, try to have the take profit we have talked about with the breakout of this level but for now I think this uh, uh, kind of, of take profit this kind of position makes sense to have it like this so uh, I want to have uh, uh, clear levels so I'm going to enter at 0.7045 and uh, stop loss, uh, let's say 0 0.70 and 10, and take profit 0 0.71 and 10. Let's see, like this is slightly worse than uh, 1 to 2. So I think I'm going for stop loss 0 0.70 and 12, and entry price I will try to get to 43 in here. Okay, I think this is uh, uh, what I'm trying to do on my MetaTrader. So let's do it, actually, and uh, let me switch to the MetaTrader. And uh, I discovered uh, how to use this program in order that uh, you can also see uh, the window to set up the order. And uh, so far, I think uh, uh, Australian dollar and US, Australian dollar, US dollar, and US dollar, Canadian dollar are going pretty well. And uh, I'm going to uh, no, this is. Australian dollar. Let's see this one. Yeah, I'm going to lower just a bit my position and I'm going to explain why I'm doing stuff like this when we set up the order for the next trade. And even on US dollar, Canadian dollar, I want to uh, have just a slightly uh, lower exposure on the market. So even here, I'm going to remove just a bit. Okay. Uh, so, uh, where, where were we? We were setting up the position. Canadian dollar against the Swiss franc. Uh, where is it? Canadian dollar against Swiss franc. I'm trying to find that out on my meta trader. Uh, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc. Oh, one minute chart. Okay, why? Okay, I, I was just probably backtesting some kind of ALM system or something like that. <laughs> oh no, I see that the price is already going higher and higher, so I'm definitely missing the chance in here. Uh, uh, okay, okay, what to do? Uh, then I, I think I will just try to settle for a buy entry, a limit entry order at this point. Uh, it's kind of a shame because uh, <laughs> we, we just said uh, I don't want to miss the chance because it, it, it seems to be quite strong. It seems to go higher and higher and actually it really went uh, uh, up very fast in here. Um, but we have seen if I try to get a price at 0 0.7050 or something like that, I wouldn't really get a good risk to reward ratio. I would get something around 1 to uh, 1.8. There is not really something that makes me happy, to be honest. Uh, so this is a tough one. I think I'm just going to structure a limit entry, entry order here. So 0 0.7043, as we have said on TradingView, and then set a stop loss that we have said is 0 0.70, uh, 0 0.7012, and then a take profit that I think was 0 0.71 and uh, 10. Let me double check. Yeah, 0 0.71 and 10. And uh, regarding the position size, uh, let me switch back to uh, to trading view because we also have to talk about position sizing in here and I'm going to do it like this. So position sizing, uh, we have a stop loss that is uh, 
31 pips so 31 pips in here and uh, Canadian dollar against the Swiss franc is in here and uh, I'm risking so far with the swing trading account on Darwin X I was risking between 1.5 and 2 percent per position because I have to try to stay up with the VAR uh, on Darwin X if I want to publish this account for investors I don't think it makes any sense to try to have this kind of very aggressive risk on the markets because with the upcoming changes that we will have on uh, on Darwin X uh, the VAR will go down so it means that I don't have to risk that much in order to have the same return as the investors I can just set a risk that is between 0 5 and 1 percent but anyway until the changes are made on the 1st of June uh, we, I will just proceed with the same line of risk that I have had so far so I'm going to risk 1.5 percent of max for this position so I'm just going to set 1.5 percent of max and uh, it says that uh, my risk is going to be uh, 59 0 59 lots now what I'm doing at the moment uh, to try also to catch up with the VAR on Darwin X, I'm uh, structuring a position that is slightly higher than this. So instead of 0 0.59, I'm going for something like... Uh, 0.75 or something like this, uh, probably 0.70 uh, is going to be enough. So I'm structuring the position a bit higher than this. And then I'm going to remove whether the price is going higher or whether the price is going uh, down. So I'm trying to remove uh, just a bit and also add just a bit if we have a retracement during our position. And uh, I'm doing this only for Darwin X, to be honest, because it is quite complicated to trade in there. Uh, but uh, if it was just a normal position, I will just go for 0 0.58 uh, as a, a trading lots on on the MetaTrader. I would not overcomplicate my uh, my trading decisions. So what I'm going to do is let me switch back to my MetaTrader in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, set 0 0.70 in here. We said the price was 0 0.70. Uh, so 43 we said yes so I'm going to structure my order like this uh, a bit of a shame as I was saying because we could have uh, called a price that was 0 0.70 40 or even just slightly, uh, slightly lower than that but uh, uh, as I was saying <laughs> we cannot always be uh, on time on the market in our trading decisions so I missed the trade in here I honestly don't think that the price is ever going back to hit my buy limit order I will just deal with it it's, it's life it happens sometimes <laughs> and uh, okay so this was also my analysis on Canadian dollar against the Swiss franc very very nice uh, uh, an interesting trade that we can have today and uh, before going on let me also have a quick look at the the chart if I'm missing anything um, okay no 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 further messages just just to uh, uh, just to reassure me is everything okay is the audio and the video still okay or I'm just disconnected that is why I cannot see any new message in the chat just let me know I'm always afraid that uh, connection is uh, not good enough or stuff like that so uh, I was saying that there are other uh, two currency pairs I was analyzing that in my opinion are quite interesting in, the, in this recent days in which we are having strong uh, trends on the market. Canadian dollar against Japanese yen is another one of them and uh, at the moment I don't really feel like trading this one. I was analyzing this potential rising wedge that we have on the market and at the moment not only the rising wedge is showing some opportunities to trade with a long position with a potential break out of it but even better if we have a slight retracement on the lower part and then we can open a long position waiting for a rejection of it but also if we consider the setup of the moving averages right now is quite bullish and also recent action has been totally bullish it's been like three or four days that this currency pair is going higher and higher so obviously here I want to try to get my opportunity to trade with a long position since I already have a position on uh, uh, US dollar Canadian dollar in favor of the Canadian dollar then I also have a position that I have just structured on Canadian dollar against the Swiss franc so in favor of the Canadian dollar I will uh, I will not open this one uh, this one I will just uh, have it as a kind of backup in case Canadian dollar starts to be a bit weaker we have a retracement and then 
I will have in that case uh, my analysis on a potential rejection on this lower part of the wedge. So at the moment I recognize that this is a very good opportunity already right now to try to open a long position but I'm already quite exposed on the Canadian dollar at the moment that, that I really don't feel the need to add uh, anything more especially on the account that I have on Darwin X in which I'm risking between uh, 1.5 and 2 percent per trade. I don't think it's a good idea to have free trades on the Canadian dollar at the moment. <laughs> so I will just uh, skip this one but uh, I have bookmarked it because uh, I want to have a further look, uh, another look during the day on this one, a Canadian dollar against Japanese yen. And the last one I wanted to analyze with you, uh, the one that I'm monitoring for today is Euro against New Zealand dollar. Even here it is quite clear that the market is in a, a trending phase. We are having super strong down movement uh, right here. We are talking about uh, like uh, 600 or even probably 700, something like this in uh, just a, a couple of weeks. So right now, Euro against New Zealand dollar is very, very strong. Uh, it's going down. It's very, very strong in favor of the New Zealand dollar, of course. And uh, at the moment, I haven't opened any position because I just want to double check if we will have any kind of uh, rejection on this level because this uh, this is a very strong down movement but you can see that uh, recently we already had a very strong down movement uh, ending on this level of support and then we had a very strong retracement then uh, once again we had uh, another strong trending movement going down and once again we had another strong retracement so here we can also say that uh, the market is going down is trending with a downtrend but uh, I will also just copy and paste this level to highlight also the possibility that we are not really in a trending market, but we are also in a kind of range at the moment. So until I see a breakout of this uh, uh, level here, I don't really want to trade with euro against New Zealand dollar because I also want to uh, consider the second option that this is just a part of this range that we are having in the past one month, one month and a half more or less. So these were the currency pairs that uh, I, I am trading or I am analyzing for today and uh, if you have any other requests just uh, uh, type in the chat otherwise I will just go on and talk about all the other things. So uh, every every uh, everyone says that is fine. So so glad to hear that. <laughs> okay, and uh, okay. So I wanted to talk about other things. So since I was talking about uh, uh, the the swing trading account. I want to uh, also give you a quick update about my swing trading account on Darwin X. So swing trading account. Okay, this is the ARM system. Um, uh, where is it? Okay. Okay, is in here. Uh, so the swing trading account, obviously it is not going very well at the moment, but uh, it is not, uh, it is because uh, it's not a very good period for swing trading, as I said, but uh, the, the difference between this account that I have on Darwin X and my main account, the swing trading account uh, that I use, is huge because with that account in the same period here I'm having minus less than minus one percent I'm having on Darwin X I'm having almost minus ten percent of course this doesn't consider the updated profit that I'm having today that is almost like probably two percent or something like that so this is more like minus eight percent still quite huge compared to the uh, main account that I have and uh, and so um, um, I want to talk about it and what is my conclusion so far. You can see you you can see that my risk, my VAR, calculated VAR on uh, on Darwin X for this account is 9.23%. Now this means that in a simple way, I want to explain how does it work at the moment before the changes that we will have on the 1st of June. So I want to use paint to do it. So we have uh, let's call it personal bar and investors bar. So my personal, uh, the investors bar, let's say just to simplify the things that is 10%, is quite fixed at 10%. My personal VAR at the moment we have seen is something around 9%. This means that uh, mm, there is a ratio, plus ratio like this, <laughs> that is investors bar, so 10%, 
divided by my personal uh, var, that is 9. And this ratio will decide the multiplier for investors compared to my personal account. So this is going to be something like 1.11. So investors will have all the profits and all the losses that are multiplied by 1.11. So if I have a loss of 2% on my account, investors will have a loss that is 2.22% on, on their accounts if they follow my swing trading account at the moment. And, uh, and of course, this, uh, uh, this led me to the decision that it is not uh, uh, possible for me to publish this account to let uh, people invest in this account that is why i haven't created my darwin my darwin in here you can see that i have the experience to list my darwin but i didn't do it because i thought already my personal account i'm trading with more or less six seven times even sometimes ten times the risk that i have compared to my personal account uh, to to my main account how can i list this darwin if my personal risk in here is already huge but the risk for investors is going to be even higher than that so of course this is not something that i want but with the changes that are coming on darwin x the the investors VAR is going down. This means that the risk for investors is also going down. So I can also lower the risk, my personal risk on Darwin X for the swing trading strategy. I can I can put this around 5%. That is logical for the next changes that we will have. This, uh, this means that uh, I will trade with uh, a risk that will be uh, between 0.70% and 1% per trade that uh, is, uh, is still out of my comfort zone to be honest because I try to risk 0.20% more or less with my main account so it's still very far from my comfort zone but it's something that I can accept much more than the current risk that is between 1.5 and 2% per trade. That is something crazy in my opinion. So this is a quick update about my swing trading account. So I think it will be better, but I still have to work with this new changes coming on the 1st of June on Darwin X. So for all the traders that are asking about uh, the status of my swing trading account, and if I'm uh, ever going to publish it, I think I will publish it because we will improve the situation with the next changes but I still need more time to see how in practical terms these uh, parameters will, uh, will change and, uh, and uh, so I can set the best conditions for investors. So, so this is a quick update about my swing trading account. Uh, then uh, before going on and analyze other things like Bitcoin, uh, and uh, and other things. I also want to give an update about what I'm doing right now. So an update about the projects I'm working on right now. Before doing that, let me have a very quick look at the chat. Um, and uh, would you be able to do some analysis on US dollar, Canadian dollar, and US dollar against Swiss franc? Uh, yes, US dollar against uh, uh, Canadian dollar is um, one that I have uh, already analyzed, and at the moment I have a short position on it. And uh, I'm going to end this uh, live trading session in about 20 minutes because I have uh, a call that I have to do. So I'm sorry about that. I can only have one hour with you today. So I suggest to uh, watch the first uh, uh, 20 minutes half an hour of the video after that because I already analyzed the uh, US dollar against Canadian dollar while the US dollar against the Swiss franc I think it is an interesting one because we are having strong uh, movements going higher at the moment and it was a kind of bounce on a short term uh, level of support that we had here but uh, to be honest it's not really an exciting currency pair for me at the moment because you can see we're having several ups and downs and also the setup of the moving averages is changing very very fast showing that we don't really have a clear trend at the moment so US dollar Swiss franc is not really a currency pair that I would trade at the moment even if we switch to the Ichimoku you can see that uh, uh, the cloud is uh, is broken every every day more or less you can see breakout going down breakout going up breakout breakout going down 
down again and we are about to have another breakout going up so of course Ichimoku is a, an indicator that is very useful in uh, trending markets but if you use it in situations in which we don't really have a clear trend or we have it ranges it's not really going to be very helpful for you so I wouldn't really suggest to trade at the moment US dollar against Swiss franc unless you are doing some very quick scalping for example on a five minutes chart in which I think that uh, uh, we have some opportunities to try to uh, take advantage of a long position but it is not really my style of trading so I cannot really suggest anything about it and uh, okay going on I wanted to give you that update about the current uh, uh, the, the current uh, uh, projects I'm working uh, on and uh, as you know I'm working a lot on the ARM system I'm, wor I'm working with uh, Ivan uh, on it uh, he is uh, uh, doing uh, all the parts uh, relative to the, the expert advisor to the trading robot and uh, is also taking care of building the website so you can just uh, subscribe with your email and you will get uh, weekly updates and uh, you will know exactly exactly when it is uh, going to be launched in the course even if you don't subscribe there uh, I will also announce it on Udemy so of course you will be the first ones to know about the expert advisor and uh, at the beginning I think it will be a project that uh, is uh, going to be uh, kind of restricted only for uh, people that are in the Udemy course but uh, even also has some plans to expand this kind of project in a way that will be useful also for people that are in the Udemy course and for people in the Facebook community as well and um, without getting into the, into details of it because it also feels a bit awkward to talk about it without, without uh, um, talking uh, with even as well because he is in this project uh, uh, just as me it's like 50 50 so I don't really want to take the merit for it and I don't really want to talk uh, uh, without him present in here uh, but uh, I can give you just a very quick update uh, without getting into the details so uh, you will see the arm system with many many options that you can customize so uh, you will it will be very cool I, I really find found it very very cool you will have so many options that uh, I said okay this was not even in the course so thank you for working in the features that are not even in the course and I'm very happy about it because I know that there are many traders waiting for it and I think that having a different choices different options can really uh, try to make everyone happy and so I'm very happy about the work that even has done on the ALM system on the ALM expert advisor and uh, as I was saying we are also trying to expand this project to other people even outside of the course it, it will it will be a paid project so if other people want to join that will be like a monthly membership or something like that but uh, uh, it, it will be nothing huge. Uh, don't expect something like a hundred dollars or something like that. Uh, it will be uh, it will be just a normal price, just like my Udemy courses or something like that. And uh, we are studying benefits that we can give to people. Of course, we are not doing this uh, only for us, as you know. Uh, but uh, we always do it for people. Uh, we are working. We are trying to approach brokers so they can give better commissions, uh, better commission rates, so you can win when you operate with the ARM system we can try to leverage the number of uh, customers that we will have in the future if this project goes well to try to uh, provide a free VPS to run the expert advisor so we are really trying to uh, have a win-win situation for everyone and uh, of course it's going to be a long-term project so at the beginning it's only uh, a matter of trying to collect your your feedback that will be the most important thing so as soon as we launch the project please feel free to say whatever it is in your mind if it is a, a criticism if it is a, a something positive that you have to say everything will be very very welcome for me and for even to try to improve on this project and uh, this is regarding the ALM expert advisor there will be an ALM expert advisor that is completely free in the Udemy course so don't worry about what I have just said about the monthly membership that one is just something that we are studying for traders that want to be very serious about 
investing in the ARM system and using the ARM system expert advisor. We are trying to give a monthly membership, but in return, we are trying to give so many things that is going to be even better for you to pay the month the monthly membership than paying one to one all the other uh, benefits that you will get. But don't worry, even if you don't have the membership, you can totally use the ARM expert advisor. We will put it in the course for free as well. So don't worry about it. And uh, what else to say about the projects I'm working on? I'm working, uh, I'm working a lot, to be honest, on the expert advisor uh, at the moment. Uh, and uh, I think it will be uh, first, uh, um, first week of June, we are, we are going to be able to give some uh, concrete updates. Uh, probably just next Monday will be the first one. And uh, then I think that uh, it's going to be middle of June or at the latest, uh, uh, beginning of July, that you will see the expert advisor in the course. Except for that, um, uh, I'm working on a big update in, uh, in all the courses. I'm working at least a couple of hours per day on it, uh, trying to find the time for it. It's, it's very, very hard to work for me during the weekdays because I have to try to stay uh, on the market. You have seen that I already missed uh, a trade because I was preparing the live trading, street, uh, the live trading session. And uh, uh, it's very, very hard for me to try to... Uh, update the courses on Udemy during weekdays and at the same time have a look at the market. It's something that uh, I find it very difficult to do and uh, so I mainly work on the expert advisor during weekdays and then I try to do as much as I can during the weekend to update the Udemy courses and all the courses are going to be updated so expect very very important changes uh, for all the courses uh, even cryptocurrency course <laughs> so expect uh, expect very exciting things and I have to say I'm uh, I'm very very excited I'm working at the moment on the Ichimoku one I'm trying to do a huge work uh, even introducing a section about uh, an expert advisor on the Ichimoku parameters that we have so it's really going to be a huge thing and I really hope that I can launch every single update by the end of this 2020 uh, what else to say about the updates that we have uh, um, there will be an update about uh, the ALM system that probably will be July or August. I'm um, studying a different level of money management uh, is very, very complicated. Uh, so so uh, sometimes I find myself in the middle of nowhere. I spend like one hour just looking at the formula and make sure that it's right. It's something complicated. So at the beginning, it's just uh, the hard work to set the formulas for it. But after doing that, is is really really very easy to set everything up in Excel. I will pay a programmer to uh, do something just like the app that you have for the progressions, and uh, and of course I will provide you with a deep backtest on it, uh, and we will see how this can improve results. At the moment, I have backtested it uh, randomly on uh, random market conditions, and uh, at the moment the results are very very encouraging, and uh, and so I'm very excited about it not just because it's something that I want to put in the course it's also something that I'm going to use myself for my trading so even if I can see like a one an additional one or two percent at the end of the year I will already be super happy about it so I'm working very hard in this period but I hope that you will appreciate all the results the results that will be coming in the Udemy courses and uh, I think that this is pretty much what I'm doing in this period. So no more updates about my activity. Um, yeah, I think that this is pretty much what I'm doing. Let me have a quick look at the chat so I can see if there is any question or any market analysis request. Uh, L is here. Hello, traders just joining. Looking forward to following the Newswing Trading account. Uh, hello, L. Uh, thank you for making it. You promised to come. Well, probably you didn't promise, but you said you were coming to say hello. I really appreciate that. <laughs> so thank you very much. And then can you use a demo account to have uh, investors? 
uh, on Darwin X you cannot do it. Uh, you cannot publish uh, a strategy, you cannot publish a Darwin with uh, a demo account. And I think that uh, it kind of makes sense because Darwin X wants to see that you put your own money in the strategy that you share with other people. So other people uh, have a risk putting your putting their money in your trading activity, but Darwin X also wants to see that you also have a risk with your own money. So you cannot uh, manage other people's money if you only have a demo account on Darwin X. Of course, you can have a demo account uh, just to try the market, uh, but uh, not with managing other people's money. If you want to do something like that, uh, I think that uh, Zulu Trade does something like this. You can have a demo account and still manage other people's money. And uh, honestly, I cannot really think of any other service that allows you to have a demo account and still manage other people's money. Then uh, uh, Lindsay says, looking forward to, uh, to the expert advisor. Thank you for your hard work uh, to you and Ivan. Thank you very, very much. I think that I can also speak uh, uh, for Ivan when I say thank you very much because uh, uh, every time, every time uh, he sees someone giving uh, us a feedback, uh, even on the Facebook group or something like that, he always sends me a message saying, "Hey, Federico, I think we're working in the right direction. I see people uh, very excited about the expert advisor. <laughs> so he is a very, very enthusiastic person, and he's working so hard on it that uh, I think that even a message like this, looking forward to the expert advisor, will make him very." happy so thank you very much for contributing with this and uh, then we have another question can you do some Ichimoku trades examples of course uh, I can do some Ichimoku examples uh, let me uh, just uh, quickly read the rest of the me messages which web trader you are using to trade other than MetaTrader so I'm using uh, to do some chart analysis at the moment I'm using uh, uh, trading view that is my main one but uh, I'm also using trend spider I have a video on my YouTube channel. I also have a collaboration with them, and I have to say, TrendSpider is is very, very uh, is a very, very nice platform. Uh, I'm using TradingView because. Uh, I really don't re I don't have time at the moment. So when I analyze on TradingView, uh, sometimes I see a good I idea. So I can just click on publish and also share with all of you traders uh, on my Facebook group or on my Facebook page, on Twitter. And uh, and so it's very, very easy for me to do something like this. But I find the trend spider to be a very very interesting one especially the the uh, the features well the feature that i have explained in the videos i don't think i have in the video that i have done for transpider i don't think i have to explain them again if you're interested in it you can just have a look at the video and uh, so at the moment i have to confess that i'm also spending some time on transpider and i find it uh, uh, very nice and they are also providing additional features that i'm studying at the moment uh, uh, so uh, I'm also spending some time on it, but my main one is uh, 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 trading view for analyzing and uh, the meta trader for uh, opening my trades. And uh, okay, I think uh, there are no more questions. So I have about five, 10 minutes left. So I think I will just switch to the Ichimoku and also talk a bit about Bitcoin. And uh, let's see with the Ichimoku if we have some interesting trades. So to be honest, I have two trades open at the moment with the Ichimoku. So I already know what to, what to analyze. And uh, I have this trade here on Canadian dollar against Japanese yen. And and, uh, I just removed it this morning and uh, I was uh, uh, I was pretty happy with the results of this trade so I was uh, monitoring the same uh, rising wedge in here and uh, and then I, of course I wanted to open a long position so I waited we uh, had uh, the price going all the way down uh, probably I could have also traded this breakout here, but uh, of course we have a rising wedge, so I feel more like trading with uh, long positions. So I didn't have any position in here. I waited, we had a breakout here. I didn't open any position even on this breakout because it didn't really feel like it was a strong one. So I saw the price going up and down here in a kind of, of short term range, and then I opened a, buy, a stop uh, buy entry order in here. So I opened my position in here with the stop loss not only below the 
the cloud but on this level of the rising wedge and so the price went all the way up so this is this was a very good breakout probably not a standard breakout uh, with the Ichimoku because if we analyze uh, only the Ichimoku in its, its standard version here when we had this breakout we had the price above the cloud the the blue line was heading for the first time once again up we had the color of the cloud was about to turn green or light blue as I have it in here on the on the trading view and then we had the price uh, price and red line above the blue line and also the Chico span above the price so of course this was already a wonderful opportunity to open a long position if you trade uh, with, the, uh, with the standard Ichimoku that I have explained in the course. You know that I also like to in integrate uh, uh, the Ichimoku with uh, the analysis of price action, uh, especially with candlestick analysis. So here I felt like it was not enough for me to open a long position. So as I said, I was waiting for a breakout of this short term resistance at the top. So I opened it here i don't think that opening here or opening here is um is a mistake i think both of them are are good and both of them it depends on the way you trade so uh it it, it really it, it really depends on your trading style i don't really want to say that if you open here and not here is a mistake it's really up to you and so the way you perceive the market with the ichimoku strategy then uh, of course we can analyze some other trending markets uh, as I said if you analyze some other currency pairs that are not really trending in this period uh, you you don't really have uh, material to open any kind of position with the Ichimoku for example this one is is uh, another one I don't really like to, to trade okay we were having a very strong uptrend here then we had a breakout and uh, this is another one uh, Okay, we have a breakout, uh, but uh, is it something that you really want to trade? A candlestick that is so weak like this, just barely going through the Ichimoku cloud, um, this is something I don't really want to trade. That is why when I say remember Ichimoku is a trending indicator so it is okay to trade when the price is around the cloud whether it is with a rejection whether it is with a breakout but consider also the trend that you're having on the market is it really a strong trend is it really a strong reversal of the trend that you're having Honestly, this for me is, is not something that I would consider to trade because this might also just be a retracement of a, a long-term uptrend. So this is not enough for me to consider a reversal of the trend. This candlestick here breaking through the cloud, for me, is just nothing. I, wouldn't, I would never consider a, a short position on a candlestick like this barely going through the cloud. Even though we have other conditions with the Ichimoku that are in favor of a short position here. I will rather analyze uh, other trending uh, currency pairs like euro against New Zealand dollar for example we were having the breakout here and I think that this was a good opportunity to trade with a rejection and this is the second position that I opened with the Ichimoku probably I removed it uh, a bit earlier uh, and uh, this one is the second position let me well I don't even have uh, to structure it I think we can follow it like this we had the breakout here once again I didn't trade the breakout here because we were coming from a strong trend I wanted to wait for something better than just a, a breakout like this so the price continued to go down I was convinced at the end that we were switching to a downtrend and so I waited for an opportunity to trade with a rejection the price had a slight retracement here we had a bearish engulfing pattern right on the cloud here so I opened my position in here on this bearish engulfing pattern a stop loss right above the cloud then with the trade go going on I also uh, lowered my stop loss uh, on this level of the cloud and then on this level of the cloud I didn't lower on this level of the cloud because I still wanted to uh, still wanted to keep my stop loss above this wing high here so stop loss here lowered until this level of the cloud entry here on this bearish engulfing pattern and then I just followed the trend you can see the price never went anymore above the cloud just follow the market and we had a very nice profit on it so this is the way I trade with the Ichimoku I know that many traders prefer to have standard conditions just like an expert advisor like 
when the price breaks the cloud, you have the blue line going up and you have, just like I have studied the parameters in the Ichimoku course, and I also gave some numbers, some values for them. I know many people prefer to say, okay, I have the two fundamental conditions. I have the exact values to open this trade. So I'm okay with opening this trade. But in my opinion, you should still also add your own analysis of the market and really study if it is a good opportunity or not, because a breakout of the cloud in a ranging condition is not the same breakout in a trending market. This is uh, the message I'm trying to uh, to deliver. And, uh, and um, I hope that next time we will have uh, uh, more time to talk about Ichimoku trading. I really have to go because I have a call right now. I want to spend just a few words on the cryptocurrencies, on Bitcoin mainly. And and uh, then I really have to go. I'm very sorry about it. Uh, I hope we can have uh, uh, another streaming very soon. And uh, I want to analyze uh, uh, Bitcoin with the swing trading setup. And uh, I have a long, uh, a long uh, position right now on Bitcoin because uh, it's, it doesn't really have anything to do with all the things that they are saying, like halving that uh, uh, just happened uh, with the boost of Bitcoin going up. Honestly, it doesn't really have to do with this because I think it's not the real reason that uh, moves the market, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, I, I just thought that uh, uh, right now the price is just going up and down in uh, a kind of range and I really like the support that we are having here at the bottom so I just decided to give it a try opening a long-term position with a long position on Bitcoin placing my stop loss below the swing low that we have here so at the moment my strategy on Bitcoin is to buy it uh, slightly above 8,000 place my stop loss at 8,000, a bit below than that. I think that my stop loss is 7,900, if I remember well. And then I just try to have a long-term position in favor of Bitcoin. I have to say that uh, there was a period of almost two years in which I was only opening short positions on Bitcoin uh, is because we had that uh, huge drop uh, in uh, 2018 at the beginning of 2018 uh, then we had uh, uh, then we also had uh, uh, so the huge drop I'm talking about I'm trying to also have the support of the chart this is the huge drop at the beginning of 2018 I'm talking about then we had a period uh, of about one year that was only trending down and uh, and so for a period of almost uh, two years I was only opening short position on Bitcoin and then I have to say that recently I, I got more interested in holding once again long-term positions uh, in favor of Bitcoin it is mainly because I see also interest in uh, big institutions in it so for example JP Morgan and Chase also increased uh, investments in uh, in Bitcoin recently and uh, and so I see that uh, there might be a future maybe not just for uh, for the cryptocurrency but also to use the technology behind it for other purposes so I see a useful um, I see um, a kind of use behind the cryptocurrencies right now and uh, and so I believe that uh, this might uh, also be a good price after this uh, market trending uh, down for a couple of years now this might also so still be a good price to start to collect some Bitcoin for the long term. So this is my view of the market at the moment. Recently, we are not having a super strong movement. We passed the phase of the super strong movement in the short period with this down movement and this up movement. So recently, the price is just going up and down in a range of about $2,000. So... This is my view of the market. Nothing exciting in the short term period, but uh, I still believe that there might be an opportunity to see Bitcoin above $10,000 uh, in the next month. So I am bullish right now on Bitcoin. Let me have a very, very last look at the chart before I go, because I really hate to be late on uh, calls. So I really have to go. And uh, can you recommend some pairs that are good to use uh, with Ichimoku? Um, 
It really depends on. Uh, um, I don't really have a specific currency pair that uh, uh, I always analyze with the Ichimoku. You see that I have my forex list in here, and I really go every time through all the currency pairs that uh, I have in here. My suggestion is to analyze uh, pairs that uh, in the long in the long term. Uh, so just zoom out a bit to check the bigger picture in the long term are showing a sign of trends uh, not uh, pairs that are showing sign of ranges for example if we check any random current currency pair for example euro against swiss franc you can see uh, if uh, that recently if we just check this action here without uh, even studying swing points uh, or other things you can see that uh, recently okay this is a daily chart uh, we we had a super strong downtrend this is uh, a chart that i want to analyze with the ichimoku where i see a concrete chance that we can try to take advantage of a trend that is a chart that i want to analyze but if we switch to the hourly chart and we see what happened recently uh, let me let me highlight it you can see that recently the price was mainly in a range in here is this something you want to analyze with the Ichimoku definitely not so you don't want to analyze the prices that are just going up and down without a clear trend so my suggestion is to quickly remove the charts that are showing sign of ranges because the Ichimoku is a trending indicator. It really cannot help you in ranging markets and only focus on charts that are showing sign of trends. It depends on what time frame you are analyzing. For example, here on the hourly charts, I will never use the Ichimoku to analyze euro against Swiss franc. So this will be already a currency pair that I will just delete in here. But if you are talking about a trending pair like a Canadian dollar against a Japanese yen that is forming higher highs and higher lows, this is definitely a uh, currency pair that I want to analyze with the Ichimoku. So once again, if you have a, a retest of this level with the price going down, you can try to take advantage of a rejection here and then only then trade the breakout of the Ichimoku cloud if the price has a rejection and go and goes higher. So trade my suggestion is try to trade trending markets not uh, ranging markets or markets that are not showing clear uh, trends so uh, i really hope that next time we can focus maybe i can uh, schedule a uh, trade a live trading session only on the ichimoku and i think i can also um, I can also uh, create a new account on Darwinx uh, to trade with the Ichimoku. It was already in my plan, but uh, I think I will speed up this process. So uh, next time we can focus a bit more on the Ichimoku because I'm a bit sorry for all the traders that really love the Ichimoku. I know many of you really like this indicator and I'm a bit sorry that many times I talk about swing trading and not Ichimoku. And uh, okay, so this ends my live trading session. Um, mm, and uh, let's see, I think I'm gonna buy your swing trading course when next coupon is here. Next coupon is going to be here. Probably there's already a coupon that is valid. You should check my website, uh, quoraforexquestion.com. I can type it in here, quoraforexquestion dot com okay uh, in the education uh, uh, page uh, you can check if there is uh, the coupon uh, for the swing trading course uh, uh, but if not if it is not valid anymore i will create the first one on the first of june or the second of june so just bear with me a few more days Mm, Lindsay says thank you very much Federico thanks uh, Lindsay thank you for being here today and uh, amazing thank you well done presentation you are a star thank you very 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 much and uh, let me see if I'm missing any message uh, and uh, love the idea okay so I will really dedicate more time to the Ichimoku mm, and uh, okay you check the full price okay sorry about that I will I will um, I will uh, provide you with the coupon on the 1st of June, the first thing I will do. 
So once again, really thank you very much for joining for today. I will see you very soon. Meanwhile, I hope you will have a great trading uh, day and a great rest of the week. Thank you again very, very much. See you very soon.